supported ako ng magulang ko basta na may maintain ko yung grades ko. And ang nagbigay sa akin ng drive para mag-competitive is wala, simula talaga pagkabata ako. Gusto ko na talagang nakikipagkompetensya sa mga tao. Gusto ko kailangan may magaling na may isang part ng ginagawa ko na mas magaling ako sa kanila. Yun, nahanap ko po yun dito sa League of Legends. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. And this is, of course, the Garena Pro Gaming Series promos and relegations for the Spring 2018. And definitely, that was quite an explosive match coming from uh, OTP and Jankski with OTP giving us a quite a show uh, of dominance over Jankski. We'll see if Jankski can actually uh, bounce back from that. But before everything, we'll be your shot guesses for this second game. I'm Atlas. With me is Chisto. And we'll be seeing what's going to happen in this second game because there's definitely there's a lot of room of improvement for both of these teams. Yeah, let's talk about that previous game. And I do believe that is the first game that has been dropped by a pro gaming series team that is defending their slot. So, Jengski, they're kind of in the hot seat right now. They have to hold on if they want to keep their spot in the pro gaming series. But let's see what both of these teams have in store for the pick and ban phase. During that last game, we saw that very unorthodox cheese strat of the Shen running the unsealed yeah. spellbook, allowing him to take that swine and swap it around for more options. Let's see if ODB will opt for that strat again. Uh, we'll see if they actually have other tricks up their sleeve. We saw Quang with that uh, very strange build there with the Essence Reaver into the Runans, into the Mob Malmordias, being uh, with Arcane Comet as well. So it's a lot more focused on hitting that volley into the AoE, into the rest of Jengski. We'll be seeing what their game plan is for now. They are blue team. They will have pick priority. So for now, we'll be looking at the bans. Lots of very frontline bans here for ODPS for Jengski. They'll be taking out quite a good mix versus Sion, Orianna, as well as Tristana. As for ODP, prioritizing Ezreal. Yeah, they do pick up the Ezreal very strong. AD carry at the moment, having that Kleptomancy will just accelerate his game. Getting those gold sacks from the Kleptomancy passive of very effective at getting Ezreal towards yeah. that late game. Because by the time there's so much gold value coming from Kleptomancy, you don't even have to use the. You can either use the consumables to continue lane dominance or to sell them for a little bit of extra gold. Yeah, working that economy. Yeah, so definitely just uh, cycling the gold here and there. Uh, there's the Morgana, lots of lockdown. It goes to the mid, uh, rather to the bot side. Leeson as well. Hedges are really loving that early game pressure that Leeson can put out. As for Jenski, wow, that is going to be a Lee Jin. Or Frost as well as a Nautilus could go to Laser yeah, uh, or could also go to Blaze as during that possible. During that previous game, Hedges' Lee Sin play was really one of the key factors in securing ODP's win. His early game pressure was really good and just let his team snowball and come out on top. Let's see if he can imitate his previous game performance. Let's see, will we see a repeat? of his early game pressure, but yeah. the switch up from Jengski as well, opting out of those tank junglers. They now have a more aggressive jungler pick in the Kha'Zix. Will it work out for them though? It's very nice in the preseason. Everyone's much, much more squishy unless they're in a natural tank. However, the Kha'Zix, they, they see that ODP actually picked the Lee Sin into the Kha'Zix, so that's actually quite a potent pick against that assassin jungler. So they could be in a little bit of a bad spot if. Uh, Yom is not able to materialize any leads for Jengski, so it seems like Blaze will be getting that Nautilus. Laser will now be actually be playing for Jengski and will be picking up that Poppy. As for ODP, still going for a very good mix here, still going for FTD's Shen. Yeah, I think we failed to mention that Jengski did sub out their top laner. Will this be a breath of fresh air for them? Could will be. Laser be the key to their success? And now he has picked up the Poppy, a pick we don't normally see anymore, but Poppy does shut down the engage option of the Lee Sin. Yeah. Having her W can stop the dashes coming from a very mobile champion. And I really like the draft coming from Jengski Esports. Yeah. Having all those CC options, all that engage, setting up the Jin for success. Being able to stop the Lee Sin as well. And it's pretty good for laning against the Shen as well. One of the best ways that Shen can win these trades, these duels in the top side, is mitigating so much auto attack damage with a Spirit's Refuge. But with a heroic charge coming from Poppy, you can just push him out of that radius and just continue wailing on him, possibly into a wall. That is one good tech uh, move you can do against the Shen. Uh, we'll see how it all plays out, because Laser will be definitely playing different. Actually, if you look at the champion select, 
Uh, it doesn't seem like FTD is running this mic once again. Uh, he was running the flash teleport before everything was locked in. He could just go and be going back to that strat, but it's possible that he's switching it up and actually going with Solve this time around. It's yeah, very possible. Speaking of switching it up, Jengski did switch up their style here, switch up the players mm -hmm. and the support pick as well. During that previous game, we saw Blaze on the Lulu trying to protect his AD carrier, but right now he's opted for a more engaged based uh, play style where yeah. he can pull the trigger on this Nautilus unlike that previous game on the Lulu. It's more, much more reactive last game, but here it also manifests in the way their jungler has picked up the Kha'Zix. That means that they want to get these early leads, they want to make that assassin snowball and just wreck everyone, run around the map with Moby Boost and just be able to set everyone else for success. And this is the Jengski style we know. We know they want to play aggressively across the map, look for these skirmishes and get objectives after those skirmishing wins. But with all that being said, let's head on to the Rift for game two of this best of three series being ODP on the blue side versus Jengski Esports on the red side. We'll be seeing how all this plays out in their level ones. I'm not expecting too many aggressive plays here in this level one uh, since Jengski is in danger of losing this entire series if they get a bad disadvantage in the early game. They're not being too aggressive in this early game, uh, rather in this level one. Yeah, Jengski, they have to play quite cautiously here. Of course, a lot at stake here, a spot in the pro gaming series. Will they be able to retain their spot? But ODP, they're closing in on it. Let's just see how ODP will opt to play their early game. Mm -hmm. It's definitely going to be quite interesting how this plays out. As you can see, FTD is running now. The Grasp of the Undying. He has deemed the clep uh, rather the Unsealed Spellbook uh, unnecessary against the Poppy. So going for a more resilient, uh, much more resolve-oriented uh, Shen here for this one. It's going to help out a lot once Yom starts ganking with that Kha'Zix. Seems like they will both be starting on this top side of the map. Really different priorities for these two junglers. Yeah, it's very important for these pro players and semi-pro players. If they want to make that transition, they need to learn how to adapt. Mm. And the switch up in the rune build coming from FTD, showing you that he can adapt into diff these different matchups. So that's a good sign for ODP moving forward. Definitely, indeed. But it seems like they have this uh, unorthodox style. Uh, coming into this promos and relegations, coming into these jungle clears, seems like Yom is naturally taking a lot more punishment. I do think he missed uh, the kite on one auto attack against the red buff, which cost him around 50 health. Uh, this that's could... big as a jungler. Yeah, that's definitely big. Uh, if he goes for any of these ganks and Hedges is able to respond quickly, they are, will be ending up on the same side of the map. So it's quite possible that this could be good for ODP. Yeah, I want to highlight the one thing that ODP's oh, comp here. But, but there's like, binding. Yeah. Oh. Seems like he is able to dodge out. Blaze in a little bit of trouble here. No more essence shift for Quang, but Frost is taking a lot of punishment. Both of the junglers are making their way downtown. Hatch is uh, looking for something. They could meet each other. Yom is hit by the sonic wave, but I don't think he'll be going straight for it. Yeah, and looking back at the point I was trying to make, yeah. one thing that ODP's comp lacks is wave clear. They have to win their early game and push their lead forward because if they fall behind, they have no ways to stall the game. Ezreal and Cassidy aren't the best picks if you want to constantly clear waves and stall games out. And like we've seen throughout promotions and relegation, once a team gets ahead in the early game, they've transitioned that into a mid-game win. Mm -hmm. And if Jengski is able to get that mid-game win, that's momentum on their side for this series. Because this is the second game of this series. This could possibly be the last. Oh, but if it is not, then it's quite possible that Jengski will use that momentum going forward into a third game. Oh, the flash makes a huge mistake there by using his essence shift. Could possibly fall here, and he does indeed. And Hedges was trying to go for the revenge, but Sonic Wave unfortunately does not hit, and Jengski gets the first blood. Nice proactive move. Move there from Jengski Esports. They pull the trigger and whoa, oh, man, the Black Shield just wore off immediately. And that's going to be a kill for Yom. It's going to be Hatches are trying to go for some revenge here. Actually He's gets a kill onto here. Frost, but he will just absolutely die here. And if this gives Yom another kill, he does. And this actually extends his buffs 
And not only that, that's two kills on the dreaded Assassin Jungler Kha'Zix. Yeah, the dredge line, max range oh, landing man. from Blaze. And this is what we know Jengsi can do. They can just turn up the tempo, play super aggressively. And that gank coming from Hechizo just went disaster. There's more trading in the mid lane. Might go for something. There's Yom with the assault onto Asak or Cassie and actually forces out the flash. Yeah, I really like the early game. But everybody's fighting. Oh man, Laser losing out a little bit on the trace there, but FTD going ahead. He does have a, one more charge of that Corrupting Potion. Could be used for a little bit of that sustain. But for now, it seems like FTD has the upper hand in this matchup. Yeah, and looking back at us, I don't think the Jengski lineup is flustered at all. They're playing very aggressively. They look comfortable out there. Mm -hmm. They're using their previous aggressiveness into this new roster. It seems like for now, in this very early game of this matchup, it's, going, it's been really effective so far. Yom on that Kha'Zix seems to be a lot more comfortable than on the tank jungler he played earlier. And those two kills as well. Just a cherry on top for this Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix very snowball as a jungler. Here but with that being said, Hechizo with visit bot lane, but with the Dark Binding not landing. That oh will man, signal that the backward be an engage coming from Blaze. Here comes a Black Shield. Hedges might go try to go for something against Blaze. A lot of damage, but I don't think it does actually end up in a kill. Hedges is dangerously low. However, there's not enough damage coming from Frost to finish that off. And yeah. ODP recovering a little bit from that bot lane. Not that enough disaster. fancy feet coming from Blaze there. Unfortunately, the Q from Lee Sin did land, and I wonder why did he go back in even though he saw Hechizo for the initial gank? Mm -hmm. Overaggression there costing him his life. And that's Yom. Uh, they knew that Yom wasn't around the corner, so I really don't know why Blaze went back in. It could be old habits, not really dying just yet. Uh, but really, that is the aggressive moves coming from Jengski. It can make or break them, and they really have to temper that. Yeah, they are still fairly ahead in kills, though, but they're trading the mid lane. Against Cassie. Here comes Yom going for the gank here. Does so much damage coming from the Hemo Plague and the sheer burst coming from that Kha'Zix. Yeah, Yom has been so proactive on this Kha'Zix, actually outpacing Hechizos Lee Sin. He's been able to impact the map more so far in this early game. And they like the change in mindset. It's like, hmm. from that first game where you saw him on to Juwani, not really able to impact the, match, the map as much. Now on this cause, he's all over the place. I think this is really uh, the nature of Jengski. They do better when they're being aggressive. They just have to temper it. And uh, earlier, they tempered it too much. Here comes another fight here, Cassie. Uh, rather, Sachi will be getting the dredge line here on him. Here we go, Yom. Four members. Arise is also around the corner. Yom wants to jump onto Sachi, but it's quite dangerous. He's actually really low in health. Arise still gets a kill against Sachi. Here comes a teleport coming from FTD. He has his flash, but he gets snared by the deadly flourish. He's still fighting against oh, Arise, but the pool, the sanguine pool, actually keeps him alive, and FTD has to run away. And here was oh, going, why did he essence shift in? Here comes a stand United to try and save him, but I think it's too late. Jengski Esports clean up the fight and five man down in the bot lane. I think that means the first turret of the game, Atlas. This is going to be five members wailing on his bot side turret and with a substantial wave, I think they can deal a lot of damage. They will actually take this first turret of the game as a second wave crashes into this one, a cannon and they will get a huge boost in gold. And this is so good for that Kha'Zix, so good for everyone else on Jengski. Yeah, questionable decisions, Ooh. I should say, coming from Quang's Ezreal. He saw five members, but he went back in so aggressive. RK shift in, but unfortunately, it cost him his life. And I don't think ODP can trade the tower. It's just a bit of chip damage coming from Hechizo. Definitely not. The red buff helping out a little bit, but that at most is going to be around 33%. And once and by he's then, he's changing as well, though. Yeah, he's really uh, has a lot of knowledge and experience with this Lee Sin, maximizing the amount of attack speed. He might actually be able to take it. He's taking it with the attack speed, but here comes Frost. Oh, it doesn't seem like Hechizo wants to risk something too hard, especially with Blaze right around the corner, but that was very, very close. Yeah, it's still a lot of chip damage onto the top lane tower, but with the Jengski bot lane making the proactive map movement, they will be able to defend, but Hechizo, he snuck around. He's gonna try and go for something. Will Jengski he knows the that Blaze wants to go for the dredge line. But it seems like a dredge line missed. It seems like Hedgeso needs to wait a little bit more. But they have to be very careful because look at the map. Yeah, look at this. It will be a 4v2 very, very quickly. But Hedgeso is chucked down really, really hard. Here comes 
the curtain call. Hedges are taking a lot of damage. FTP is trying to block it, but Yom is going to jump in. Possibly here comes Sachi and the rest of the OTP squad. Yom still goes in for the flash into the leaf, but Sachi gets a kill on Messi. Blaze. Gwang is really low. It actually gets taken down by the Kha'Zix. Shut down by Cassie, however. And that is, in the end, going to be a two for two. That was a messy, messy skirmish right there in the top lane. Jansky going so aggressive, diving the tower. They do end up trading kills, though. It is actually actually backfiring on them because that was a shutdown onto Yom. And that gives Cassie a huge boost in gold that he's really looking for. And for now, the gold lead is actually pretty substantial. But if Jengski keeps making those over-aggressive moves, then slowly but surely, ODP will be able to get back that deficit. Yeah, but ODP, they do also have these over-aggressive yeah. tendencies. We've it's so seen strange. them try to overreach, but Lacer's trying to look for the Ezreal. A little bit of not even wave clear come from the uh, true, true shot barrage. <laughs> Seems like Wang uh, a little bit on edge. He's 0 3 and 3. He's using that kleptomancy to really try and bridge the gap between him and Frost. I'm really interested to see how much the kleptomancy has impacted him. He is playing at a deficit. Uh, I'm interested in seeing how much a Kleptomancy can save him from such a deficit. Yeah, and that deficit really just comes from how proactive Yom mm. on Kha'Zix has been. He's been constantly visiting this bot lane. And with that being said, he just... He just gives so much problems for ODP's bot lane. Oh, yeah. Now they have to deal with that. Whoa, to ADC! Quang. Oh. Seems like, yeah, the barrier actually did save him there. But if he had actually not went for the detour into the Skirmisher Saber, instead went straight into the Dust Blade of Cracktar, mm -hmm. leaving the Hunter's Talisman, that would have been a dead Quang, even with a barrier. Yeah, I do agree with that. And with that being said, Quang, he has to oh, be very, yeah, very, very still careful. Wants blood. Sachi being chucked down to half health, it means that they have a little bit less control over this Baron side. If Jenski can make a little bit of leeway, uh, and foothold in this bot side river, they could make a move on Mountain Day. Yeah, even with Yom getting shut down during that previous skirmish in the top lane, he's still fairly fed on this Kha'Zix. 4-1-3, mm. that's still very good stat line for him, and he's building towards his core items very fairly quickly, and the, mem the squishy members from ODP, they need to be very, very careful when placing wards, trying to face check these bushes. Because Kha'Zix deals so much damage coming from the fog floor. Hedges is actually the one making a move on this Mount Drake. He's taking his time, but he knows Jensky can't really uh, respond to this because their bot side, bot lane, is all the way up top. And uh, Cassie is actually taking the blue buff, or rather around the blue buff side waiting for the turnover. So this does give ODP a little bit of time with that Mountain Drake, now transitioning it into this turret. Look at that demolish. Yeah, it will mean the top lane tower falling for ODP, but there's five members of ODP pushing strong in the mid lane. How much can they get? This is quite possibly a good move coming from ODP. This will, be at least, this. Yeah, this will be at least 10 or 15 seconds before Jenksy can respond to this in strength. It seems like ODP getting two turrets closest yeah, to the gap of gold. Yeah, ODP, gonna get sandwiched here. They need to disengage now. Here comes a curtain call. They will try everything they can to escape. But Arise actually slowing all of them down. Here comes the Quang's death charge down. as well. Everyone is down. Quang, there's no more AD care for them. Everyone else is still quite squishy. Cassie can escape, but at the cost of three other members and they overreach once again. Jenksky takes back their gold. Yeah, and even with the two mid towers going down for Jenksky Esports, they're able to pick up a fight. They find the great engage onto ODP. They're able to flank around all the way from the top and just pick up three kills for themselves. Very well played from Jenksky Esports. Yeah, they all bunch up together. Let's break down how that happened. Yeah, look at the damage coming from the Vladimir here. Just so much more bonus damage coming from his ultimate. And the CC lockdown coming from Blaze and Laser. There's just no escape for the members of ODP at this point. And the 1v1, of course, the Fed Kha'Zix is going to win that off the back end. Just a really well-played engage, a flank engage coming from Jensi. The Void Assault doing so much work. It's really interesting how... Oh, it seems like there's going to oh, be another fight. Frost? Frost is under attack by Cassie and the rest of ODP, and he will just fall. This will definitely be the Rift Herald unless Yom can make a move, but it seems like mid lane is his attention right now. Yeah, I don't think Jin can realistically escape once you're being chased down by a Cassidy without any members to support him, and I think that pick from ODP will lead to them securing this Rift Herald for themselves. This could be big if they can use it properly. 
this can easily bridge the gap of 2,000 if they're able to get two extra uh, turrets from this, or at least one, and then make a move with some other objective. Yeah, they are trying to set up their side lanes to push now. They're trying to set up that 1-3-1 one, one split push with the Shen and Cassidy. Still going to be very difficult. With Yom breathing down their necks, the Squishies can't have a moment's respite. And it's actually quite interesting how the optimal build for Kha'Zix has changed. Oh, well, FTD? FTD gets blocked by the hero with the presence. And it seems like the dash will actually be stopped, but not enough to actually take him down. A flash burnt onto the Shen, though, is huge because mm. that's one of their engage options gone. Shen's flash taunt is one of the few ways that ODP can actually look for these fights. That's one of their few uh, quote-unquote hard engages that they can have, and now it's gone from them. They will just have to wait for Jenksy to get on them and then use the power of their mobility, the Cassidy, the Ezreal. Like laser, I don't think he's going to fall from this one. He does have a turret to fall back against. Yeah, and like you mentioned, Atlas, now that Yom has his Dust Blade completed, oh, it's gonna be scary. the squishy members of ODP need to be very, very careful. They need to group up strength in numbers to yeah. prevent these picks from happening. Because if they continue to give up these picks onto the side of Jenksy, I think we might see a Game 3. Yeah, Solitude is going to be death. This is a choke point. This could be very potent for oh, Yom. ODP. Yom's taking a lot of damage, but they're all in the same spot. But Quang's dealing so much damage as well. Ta Quang takes down Blaze, and now Cassie is chasing down the rest of Jenksy. Double kill for Quang, but they get knocked back by Laser. So it's now going to be Quang against Frost? Frost and Laser. Frost will actually survive through all of this unless Cassie can get something in this one. But FTD actually takes down Arise is still fighting. Laser is still going to try and take them down. He's still almost full health, and Arise is also very, very resilient with all of that life steal. And she's like, it will end up as a three for two. Yeah, that trade there. I think Yom overextended there mm. without his tank line being in front of him. The members of ODP are able to target him down. But look at it, Yom. He has no front line with him and he's not able to assassinate anyone because the members of ODP are grouped up and it took so long for Laser on this Poppy to look to join this fight and ODP are able to pick up some oh, key kills That's what but changed unfortunately the fight, Frost he was able to clutch it out was able to take down the low members of ODP at this point it's just a very messy team fight yeah and definitely I do think the ultimate from Laser changed the course of that fight by removing two members of ODP from that fight for a few seconds, it helped Jangski, it helped Arise uh, get out a little bit more damage, enough to actually change the ties. And actually, Jangski won that fight by one death. And look at the mobility that Yom has uh, through the jungle. Moby Boots plus the evolved Void Assault just gives him so much potential to roam around and try to find potential targets. If he's over aggressive like that, he can get caught, but it's still difficult for ODP to be safe at any point in the jungle. Yeah, and I'd like to point out that Arise has kind of been flying under the radar th throughout this game. We've always been highlighting Yom, mm. but this Vladimir has been doing so much work during Definitely. these fights. It's just that the damage from the Hemo Plague, it's not something that's immediately seen. But once it gets put down, ODP feels the pain. Laser trying to defend his turret with his ultimate, but it actually just scares him away as Arise arrives. Yeah. Ooh, I think Yom got chunked out by Cassie on this Cassid, and he's scaling towards that late game fairly quickly compared to his counterpart carry Ezreal. I mean, Cassidy in the late game is an absolute monster. He'll just mm. destroy anyone who's squishy enough on your team. And I think Frost, he has to play extremely cautiously if they're going to enter a fight with the Cassidy up. Mm -hmm. They have to be absolutely aware of where Cassidy is because Cassie then can deal out a lot of damage. And if Frost is not able to escape, then that's one huge loss of DPS. But then. Cassie also has to worry about Arise, worry about Yon taking out his back line. I think we might see a fight, Atlas. This Cloud is Drake. quite possible. Cloud Drake could be important for these two compositions. It seems like ODP doesn't decide that it's worth it and they back off. Yeah, feels bad for Cloud Drake. Not worth the contest right <laughs> there. It's not the very popular Drake, I mean. Hmm, it's definitely not. It's a very useful and highly coordinated uh, fight. So it seems like Jenkski right now uh, is controlling the game with the sheer aggression and brute force that they're putting out here. Yeah, and like I said, 
previously. The uh, lack of wave clear coming from ODP's draft, it allows Jengski to dictate how these minion waves go. They're mm. able to set up these pushes, and without any real form of wave clear from ODP, all they can really do is respond. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a much more reactive side of things, and as we know, uh, as it is in the preseason, most teams that are uh, relegated into a more uh, defensive and reactive position, usually those are the ones that are disadvantaged and slowly get choked out by the teams or just get completely run over. Yeah, actually, throughout PR Atlas, we've seen this trend where whichever team comes out on top of the early game, they usually just snowball that lead and transition that into victories. But right now, the game still looks fairly even as we go towards the 20-minute mark. Both teams just fighting for position. Mm -hmm. It just has to be who pulls the trigger correctly. ODP and Jengski have very different points of power where they're in the fight. Quang, they're pulling the trigger now! <laughs> oh, definitely now. Quang, as soon as he uses his essence shift, Frost responds with the curtain call to try and uh, destroy him. Seems like now it will deter them, push them into the turret. Yeah, I think the critical will be used to zone them off the tower. Ooh, that dredge line didn't Barely, land. barely missing right there. Will Hatch is uses as an opportunity to try and kick Frost back into the team. However, uh, it seems like it's much too dangerous of a prospect right now. Yeah, and I think there will be an engage coming However, in. However, that is going to be ha below half health for a rise. He will be kicked back as Yom and Laser get into the front line. Quang actually oh, Frost is over, down. but Frost is down. That's one huge loss of DPS. FTD and, and uh, Cassie are still trying to go for these skills. Everyone else is so low. Yom as well cannot return back into the fight. Oh, like Blaze is up. the last one alive, and Yom is still trying. He actually evolves in the middle of that brush and tries to run away. That will actually be a victory for ODP. And like I said previously, Frost, he has to be very careful with Cassidin being this at this point of the game, he's just hitting his late game spike even faster now. And for ODP, they pull off the win in the team fight over Jenks Esports. Seems like for now they have a little bit of breathing room. They are barely had. I, actually, no, this is not a lead. This is complete equality in terms of their goal. It's really more about how they execute it. Let's break it down how this fight started. It was Jengski oh, Esports' arise. classic aggression, trying to go for all these skills, but unfortunately their fight lines weren't set up properly where Frost didn't have enough peel and Cassie with the flank able to take down the Jin, and that's so much DPS denied from the members of Jengski Esports. And the Cassie just absolutely went off this fight untouched, no CC touching him. It just destroys them. Yeah, and Ar Arise actually charged in way too deep where he was able to get taunted and that's where they put down their important DPS on him. And when he rose back from the Sanguine Pool, he, he didn't have enough health to actually keep fighting. And by then, he was actually down. And look at this. FTD just tracks down this Kha'Zix and takes him out. Yeah, I found him right there. And with this game all evened up at the 22 minute mark, oh, they're making ODP a for starting Baron. the Baron. There is Yom right around the corner, still very dangerous. Cassie does not want to get caught by Yom. There's a skirting call on the floor to try and take need out. Need to block. Yep, really need to go for the help, Mr. President, uh, for this Baron dance. Seems like Cassie will survive that barrage of shots. Yeah, both teams, they need to be very careful when approaching this Baron area. We always mention Baron can work with you or can work against you. We've seen many comebacks just from a misplay at the Baron area. Both teams with so much on the line need to be very, very careful approaching that objective. The important thing for Jengski is when they charge in, it has to be as five. One member cannot be too far ahead. That's how they almost lost those previous team fights. Yeah. And that's how they lost that previous team fight with Arise being too far forward. Yeah, they need to put tanks in the front and carries at the back. Fight lines will be there. Oh, oh. y'all might fight. Wait. Whoa. Oh, oh he actually, actually had target. a different target in mind, but it might backfire on him as Hechizo tries to go for it. There's a lot of damage from that Lee Sin, but it's not enough to materialize a kill on that Kha'Zix. Laser will try and go for Quang here. He cannot actually run unless he goes for the Arcane Here comes Cassidy. They are in a choke point, but there's a lot of damage. Oh, Frost is down again! FTD. Frost actually gets taken down. Laser is the, one of the only survivors as Yom is already escaping. This is a signal for Baron. 
However, this is quite dangerous as Yom is still alive. It seems like they will just put down Vision. Yeah, another team fight win for ODP, and we are now tied up in kills. Oh man. man. This is one of the closer games we've had in promos and relegations. It seems like it's, everything's just happening by the skin of your teeth. Yeah, and fighting in these choke points can be very, very messy. Things can go so fast. And looking at this fight, Frost, he was just dead center. He gets taunted by the Shen and with Quang untouched. There's no threat on this Ezreal. He's just able to point all of his skill shots down that tiny area. And that just allows him to clean up the team fight. All of the damage from Cassie as well as MTD just allowed oh, actually, them to clean it up. Cassidy went down. Oh man, that is one a huge loss in terms of their damage here when they dance for the Baron. They need to be very careful approaching this. Jin is not the fastest AD carry to use when you're trying to take down the Baron. They I think Jensi will go for it. the aggressive call, but Hatchizo is up. Yom's taking quite a lot of damage as well. 15 seconds until Cassie. Spike make or break the oh game. Man, that's Atlas. a lot of damage from the two shot barrage. Quang's dealing a lot of damage as well. Sachi trying to go for something. Yom might actually oh, fall. Yom, fall. Down. Yom falls to the, <laughs> to the Baron. And Frost gets damaged so much. FTD is taking a lot of damage as well. Gets shielded, but that's the rest of their damage. Taken out. Jenski just falls apart in the Baron pit and arises. The remaining member still in the fight, and Laser has to run away. What ODP. a disaster for wow. Jenski Esports right there. And I think that will mean the Baron going over to ODP. Oh man, that's the thing that happens. Because you have Jen, you don't do the Baron fast enough, and Yum. He was the one tanking most of the Baron shots. Yeah, Laser, he should be the one tanking the Baron here, but this is so messy. It's only at 5k, and Jensi aren't able to commit fast enough to finishing this Baron. And with Gwen. Frost also taking so much Baron damage, man, he just goes down. Unfortunate for Jensi. During all of that, Quang was just left on almost untouched. It's really how much all of the damage that they put down, the Baron, the two shot barrage and once they were all trapped in that pit that's where they were free to just rain terror on Jenski and that just left them hanging now OTP is on a 5,000 gold lead they are at a point where they can fight constantly against Jenski Quang right now is really focusing on surviving all the damage that Jenski can put out relying on the damage uh, a little less than the Triforce more on the Iceborne Gauntlet to survive against Yom as well as the Muramana yeah, and just in a snap, Atlas, we see the game break wide open just from that barren area. We did say it can work with you, it can also work against you. And now, Jengski, they're on the back foot. They need to defend if they want to keep their PGS spot. And they're just demolishing these turrets. FTD oh. might be in danger with Laser and Frost wailing on him. Actually, the rest of the Jengski squad trying to go for him. He's a one very tanky Shen. He will eventually inevitably fall. But what they is need to recall. going? They need to recall. This is taking so many resources away from Jengski. They are trying to recall. It's around 5, 10 seconds at least before they can return. I don't think they can defend the tower. That is going to fall very, very quickly. This could possibly be to put more a lot of turrets taken away from Jenski. The curtain call is there to try and slow them down and try and stymie their retreat. Oh my god, so aggressive. very aggressive trying to go for Yom, thrusting the armor of his Iceborne Gauntlet and it actually takes down the assassin. Quang assassinates the Kha'Zix, giving him a taste of his own medicine. My god, that was so aggressive. That is a little bit of the armor from Iceborne Gauntlet helping him out, reducing the effectivity of that lethality and just allowing him to take him out because of his range as well. That was the advantage. He had the initiative in terms of damage against Yom and now they're oh, the behind teleport? one member and the teleport could mean the fight as Quang goes aggressively in. FTD as well does not land a ton. However, he's still going in strong. Blaze falls down. That's one of the frontliners of Jenski taken away and this is going to be Cassie chasing him in with FTD right beside him. He's gonna dash in with a ton. However, now he's trapped behind enemy lines. 
Hechizo oh, has him down. out with a safeguard, and now Yom is going to fall down against the rest of ODPS, gets kicked back by Hechizo. And this is just Jenski opening up the game. This could actually be the victory as the takedown inhibitor. That's 30 seconds of the rest of Jenski's squad. Yeah, all of a sudden, these death timers got so long. That might be the fight that sends ODP to the pro gaming series. They're knocking down the Nexus Turrets Atlas. They're so quick and destroying these structures. That's a current call. Trying to one last ODP, they're to gonna try. do it! They might be able to defend it, but they're just ignoring Jenkski. That's going it. for the Nexus. ODP wins this 2-0 against Jenkski Esports. That game just exploded so quickly after the And there you have it. We see the final eight teams that will be heading into the next PGS split. And my god, that game went that was like, crazy. That was in a snap. Just it's ended. just slowly ODP picking apart uh, Jenkski. They were fighting back, but as soon as ODP was able to take out one piece from the Jenkski puzzle, it left them way open for everything else. Yeah, and I think it was the Baron misplay coming from Jen. Unfortunately for them, Baron did not work with them. Yeah, Baron is one fickle worm and that is just tragic for Jenksy, but congratulations for ODP. Yeah, Man. they're going to be the newest faces to the pro gaming series alongside, of course, Barcy x Rage hmm. Esports, who did qualify, unfortunately, for Jenksy Esports. Their PGS run will halt for, for the now. next split. For now. Uh, for this split, and I do think that ODP has so much potential. Their players, a lot of creativity, the strategy, I think at this level is on point. And I'm excited to see more from them in this coming spring split. Yeah, I am too. But of course, that was the Garena Pro Gaming Series promotions and relegations. Uh, we'll be seeing a, a little bit more, uh, talking a little bit more about everything that's happened in the past two days. Uh, we saw a, a lot of action. Yeah, we saw PGS teams defend their slot. Mm. Of course, TNC looking very strong. Infused as well, really showing up 2 0 in their series. And we also saw some new bloods make it. Yeah. In. Of course, Barcy X Rage Esports, a mix of former PGS talent as well as new bloods coming in. Yeah. Actually, I'm. As I'm excited for ODP's presence in the PGS. They have, as I said, a lot of new talent uh, with Hechizo uh, as their jungler. A Leading lot of charge. aggressive moves as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do think that one of the things I'm also excited for uh, is seeing the rest of uh, the teams really do good in the PGS. I really, I, it was really good to see uh, me play in the PGS as well. Rebenga, one of the uh, veterans of the PGS as well, seeing them play, definitely refreshing, a little bit nostalgic, and it's just so crazy. Pro promos and allegations so far uh, has been quite an experience for the players, for the viewers, for everyone. Yeah, and I have to agree with you on that point. The level of competition in the pro gaming series has been constantly rising throughout the years, and we just saw these teams really stepping up their game. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is uh, moving forward. These organizations, uh, the infrastructure of esports in the Philippines definitely needs to come uh, and continue walking forward. And these are some of the teams that we'll be seeing. Once again, we're still seeing TNC and Fuse will be staying the PGS. ODP, as I said, lots of potential. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, same, same. And with that, you see, you get to see the eight teams that are finalized. Mm -hmm. And all those slots have been locked in. Once the PGS uh, 2018 spring season starts, we'll be seeing much more of the action at a much higher level than we saw here. And fast and it's going paced, to, yeah, even. fast paced even. I'm very excited to what season eight can bring to the table. But of course, for now, that was promotions and relegations of the Green Pro Gaming Series. We've been your shoutcaster for that last game. I'm Atlas. With me was Chisto, and we'll be seeing you once spring split starts.
try everything they can to escape, but Arise actually slowing all of them down. Here comes the Quang Death Charge down. as well. Everyone is down. Quang, there's no more AD care for them. Everyone else is still quite squishy. Gassy can escape, but at the cost of the a choke point. This could be very potent for oh, ODP. Yup. taking a lot of damage, but they're all in the same spot. But Quang's dealing so much damage as well. Quang takes down Blaze, and now Cassie is chasing down the rest of Jax. Double kill for Quang, but they get knocked back by Laser. So it's now going to be Quang against Frost? Frost and Laser. Frost will actually survive through all of this unless Cassie can get something in this one. But FTD actually takes down Arise is still fighting. Laser is still going to try and take them down. He's gone and almost Laser get into the front line. Quang actually oh, Frost is over, down. but Frost is down. That's one huge loss of DPS. FTD and uh, Cassie are still trying to go for these skills. Everyone else is so low. Yom as well cannot return back into the fight. Oh, so the Blaze is up. the last one alive. Trying to go for Quang here. He cannot actually run unless he goes for the Arcane here comes Cassidy. They are in a choke point, but there's a lot of damage. Oh, Frost is down again! FTD. Frost actually gets taken down. Laser is the one of the only survivors with a ton. However, now he's trapped behind enemy lines. Hechizo cuts him down. out with a safeguard, and now Yom is going to fall down against the rest of ODPS. Gets kicked back by Hechizo, and this is just Jansky opening up the game. This could actually be the victory as the takedown inhibitor. That's 30 seconds of the rest of Jensky squad. Yeah, all of a sudden these death timers got so long that might be the fight that sends ODP to the pro gaming series. They're knocking down the Nexus Turrets Atlas. They're so quick at destroying these structures. That's a current call. Trying to one last push ODP, they're gonna to do it. They might be able to defend it, but they're just ignoring Jensky. That's Going it. for the Nexus. ODP wins this 2-0 against Jensky Esports. That game just 